Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Audio Tools Explained. Glad to have you again this week. We're going to be going over something that you can use in tandem with what we explained on our last Audio Tools Explained episode, and that is going to be LFOs. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillation. And basically what this is, is you have a plugin or a setting on a plugin that simulates a low frequency wave. Now this can usually range from 0.01 hertz all the way up to 20 hertz, or maybe a little further than that, depending on which LFO plugin you're using, what DAW you're in, what software you have available, stuff like that. And what you can do with these modeled waves is they don't actually come out as audio because for the most part, they are well below the human range of hearing. What you do with these low frequency waves is you actually use them to modulate other settings on other plugins or in certain synths. A lot of synths have LFO settings or LFO options already readily available in their synthesis sections. So this is something you can use both in your regular day-to-day -day sound design, in your synthesizers, as well as just to use on your regular audio to get a little creative with it again. There's really no limit to what you can modulate with an LFO depending on what software you have. If you're just using stock plugins, you might not have an LFO readily available, but there is one I'm gonna explain at the end of the video that you can get and drag and drop into any DAW, and it's very, very flexible. But before we do that, let's just get into the basics of how to use one, what it is, and what it does. Now, as you can see in front of me here, I have Ableton open again, and you're gonna see a very familiar plugin at the bottom here, which is the stock auto filter in Ableton. I know we already covered filters, but I'm gonna use it once again to kind of demonstrate how an LFO works and how it kind of modulates and what it can do. As you can see on the right side of the filter here, it has this section called LFO S and H. Now we've already gone over what LFO stands for, but what are these settings down here? Amount, rate, phase, etc. Well, I have this pad here that I've dragged and dropped from Ableton stock samples. As you can hear, it's kind of a gritty pad base, whatever you want to call it. And I have this filter down here that I've applied cutting off at around 2000 Hertz. Now let's say I want to make this sound a little more interesting. Well, we can easily do that by adding a little bit of LFO. It'll give it a bit more movement. And if we want to use this sound in the sense of a pad, or even if we do want to use it in the sense of a bass, it can add just a little bit of interest. So what we'll do is we'll turn this amount up and we'll turn this rate up as well. And you'll kind of hear how this LFO is modulating this filter. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take that point where that filter's cutting off those frequencies and it's gonna move it up and down the frequency spectrum at a rate determined by my rate here, which is the modulated wave it's going to put out and the amount, which is how far back and forth it's gonna go back. If you watch the video I did on phasers, it's gonna create a similar effect to that, except it's only going to be doing a high filter cut and it's not gonna have any sort of weird phasing issues. Now, of course, I only had that up on the auto filter, but there is actually another plugin in Ableton that outlines this sort of LFO effect, and that is the auto pan, which I've just loaded up here. Now, the auto pan works extremely similar to how an LFO works. It starts panning your sound from left to right. Once again, the amount it is panned left to right is determined by the amount here. The rate of the LFO is determined under rate, and then it has phase and shape options to help determine the shape of your LFO. All of these settings are very common across pretty much any LFO plugin or any LFO setting, and they all generally do the exact same thing. So once again, I'll turn this off and you can hear this bass pad. But once we turn this auto pan on and we adjust the amount and rate, you're gonna see it panning back and forth. Now we can adjust the rate up and down to adjust the rate that it's panning left to right. And 
And we can also adjust the shape with this shape knob. And we can even choose different LFO shapes at the bottom here. The first two examples I showed you with the auto filter and the auto pen were actually done using a sine wave as the base shape. But most LFOs, you will allow you to either manually edit the LFO's shape or have a base of pre-existing shapes to pick from. In Ableton, they only have a few base ones to pick from. They have sine, square wave, saw wave, and a random one, a couple random ones actually, that can really get creative with it if you so desire. And basically what this does is it will change how the LFO is affecting your sound. Once again, going back to the auto pan, if I change it to a saw wave here, or another different type of saw wave here, you can hear that it's affecting your sound differently. And now what happens if we try the random mode? So you can really get creative with stuff like this. If I bring us over to Nuendo here and open up Serum, I can show you what I mean when I say some LFOs will actually allow you to manually edit their shapes. I've loaded up a very simple instrument here, and I'm just gonna apply this LFO to a couple things such as filters and distortion. So now I have my Serum LFO mapped to a few different things. And as you can see, it doesn't have any sort of shape setting but it does have an amount control and a rate control. The amount control is actually in this manual edit window here where the max amount is at the top and the lowest amount is at the bottom. You can change what the highest and the lowest is set to on the actual things that you set it to in Serum by just changing these little blue markers here. Now for now, I'm just gonna keep it to the simple saw design that it's loaded up with as a stock setting. But you can actually double click in here to make your own points and change the filter however you want, like so. And you can even change the curve. Now that I've got this LFO mapped to a few things, let's see how it sounds without any of the LFO modulation first. Very basic, it's kind of retro-y. It's got a lot of that saw wave coming through with that sine wave kind of holding down the harmonics. Now let's see what happens when we apply our LFO. It doesn't necessarily sound better, but it activates a whole brand new range of creative opportunities for us if we want to change sounds. Right now we are limited in the fact that the LFO that we're using is only able to modulate what is in Serum. And if we want to use shape control such as the Serum LFO offers us, or want to get even more creative with our sounds, there's not a lot of options available in terms of stock plugins or free plugins. However, there is one plugin available on the market made by the same people that produced Serum that will allow you to load it into your DAW and pretty much modulate anything on your system that has an adjustable knob. This is just the simple LFO tool that, we were, that Expert released. It has the almost the exact same interface as the Serum LFO, but has a lot more options and you can really get creative with this, especially in electronic music where this particular plugin seems to flourish uncontrollably. You can actually use it in all of the ways that you can use the Serum LFO, but you're not locked in to just the Serum instrument. You can actually put this plugin in your project and link it to any other setting on any other plugin that is on that channel. So you are able to actually get extremely creative with an LFO and you can modulate a lot of things. One extremely useful way to use an LFO is to actually just add some interest into your pads. Put a filter in, modulate it a little, it creates a little bit of movement in your pad. You can use it to sidechain your bass to your drums without using a compressor. You can use it to even change the overall makeup of your sound using different types of synthesis LFO modulation and using the LFO to apply a variety of effects such as LFO distortion, LFO flangers, and you can add their mixes in at different rates and you can get an infinite amount of creative potential using an LFO with some of your plugins. 
Now, of course, this isn't an overly complicated topic. However, I hope you guys found it useful in at least understanding what an LFO is, how it works, and what the heck those shapes mean. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next week where we will be doing our breakdown part one of the Skyrim track we released last week. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good day.